factories in Victorian Britain, Ruskin sees them corrupting life. In his new book, published in 1860, Unto This Last, it's a quote from the New Testament about value, there's a gear change in Ruskin's moral preaching. He turns on his disciples, the people who'd been inspired and educated by him to value art. They are the rich, the upper classes, the new entrepreneurs. It was the new factory system that created their wealth, but in doing so, it destroyed what made life worth living. You can't cultivate yourself with art and then dehumanize everybody else, Ruskin says. Ruskin isn't against wealth. He thinks wealth should have a purpose beyond its own creation. He says there is no wealth but life. He's against the soullessness of the social results of Victorian commercialism. He thinks work is part of life. It shouldn't deaden you, it should fulfil you, like he imagined workmen in the medieval age were fulfilled. It's a mindset. Everyone's in it. He curses the upper classes for exploiting the ordinary man. He sees the ordinary man serving capitalism as unfulfilled, not really a man at all. In our time, we haven't really moved on very far. Instead of industrialism, we've got globalization, which means we haven't got rid of degrading labor conditions. We just move them around to different parts of the world. We're still alienated from our work. We're cut off from nature even more than people in Ruskin's time. Nature threatens us because of what we've done to it. Our fear that a global catastrophe is going to kill us all is partly real. We really have corrupted nature, but partly a metaphor. We feel we're corrupted inside. We are at war with ourselves. Once again, it's a picture by Turner that mirrors this moral struggle. The picture Ruskin owned, given to him by his father. Its full title is Slavers Throwing Overboard the Dead and Dying. Typhoon coming on. Slave ship owners used to throw slaves overboard if the ship was threatened and then collect insurance money for the lost cargo. For Ruskin, slavery is still a problem under industrialization. What's the difference if you're sold into slavery or if you sell yourself? After all, a slave is all a labourer really is under the new system. For Ruskin, the painting is not about something that happened long ago and is over now. It's a metaphor for the unfeeling nature of capitalism. The coming storm is the big point of Turner's title. Typhoon coming on. Ruskin damned the factories, where man is divided from his own self, cut off from nature, working in inhuman conditions. But what were Ruskin's positive proposals? They're found in the new modern art styles that Ruskin had begun encouraging in the 1850s. This is the Pre-Raphaelite style. These artists present Ruskin's revolutionary social ideas in the form of metaphors. Nature is the main one. They show it glowing, irradiated, hyper-detailed. In life, it's being crushed, but in this new type of art, you can't avoid it. You have to consider nature's meaning. The pre-Raphaelites all read Ruskin's books. They absorb the idea that reality is changing in ways that seem inhumane. In creative work, we can find that lost humanity. In art, we can refine the connection to nature that we've lost in life. Today, we don't find the Pre-Raphaelites rebels or shocking. They seem very conventional because they paint things very clearly. It's art that's liked by people who don't like modern art. But in the 1850s, it was modern art. To get the Pre-Raphaelites to take them out of that slightly rosy glow of tameness that we usually associate them with, you have to imagine a whole different set of values. They were a group, they did not follow convention, they made their own rules, they wanted to upset things, they wanted something new. They wanted to express their own moment through an ideal of a kind of art that might have happened if the Renaissance hadn't happened. Work 
interconnected with nature. Nature out the window, the place of work opened up onto nature's sights and atmosphere. When you look at what's in this painting, Christ in the House of His Parents by John Everett Millet, you keep hearing the sound of Ruskin's voice, the things he goes on about. Work, nature, humanity, the fate of the world. We see a sentimental Jesus. The Victorians were shocked by the Holy Family working, having dirty feet, being skinny, being working class. It's actually a radical vision of labour. Every object glows individually, but each is governed by an overall order, not rigid, but organic and humane. The inner meaning is open your eyes, see what's really out there. Ruskin values the pre-Raphaelites trying to make the familiar fresh. Their obsession with detail isn't them showing off their craft skills. It's about the strangeness of reality. Reality seen with the habits of seeing stripped away. Usually we do what we're told to do without realising that's what we are doing. We're puppets of convention and habit. What Ruskin is saying is that being able to see the world clearly is connected to being able to do something about it.